How you doing? Welcome back. Good to see you. Hope you're having a great day. Today is going to be a really good day. This is a really fun video. I actually had a ton of fun with it, but we're talking about how to light with RGB lights. So first I want to talk about what makes up color. Obviously RGB lighting is red, green, and blue, and everything is made up of those three colors, a mixture of all three. And most of the time on RGB lights, the way that we are adjusting the color is called HSL. That stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. Hue is measured in degrees from zero to 360. And that's what's more commonly when we think of color, the hue is what we're talking about usually. Saturation is what is the brilliance or the intensity of the color. Zero would be white. It's there's no color in it. There's no saturation. And then 100% is full saturation. It's the full color. And then luminance is just how bright the light is with 0% being off or black. And then as you increase, you're taking less black out of the light and it's getting more bright. And then the other thing I want to run through really fast is color schemes. I'm sure you're familiar with this, with the color wheel and all the different color schemes, but I just want to run through the three most popular, I think are the most popular in lighting and in color. So the three most popular color schemes are monochromatic, complementary, and analogous. Complementary colors are the colors that are on the opposite side of the color wheel. This is where the teal and orange look comes from. This is why it's so popular because it is a complementary color and it really makes skin tones pop because our skin is kind of in that orange realm. And then teal is the complementary kind of like what I'm doing here. It makes the skin tones pop even more with that teal being the complementary color to that. Monochromatic is where you take one hue, you're staying on that hue, and all you're doing is adjusting the saturation and the luminance of that hue to get uh, you know, contrast and separation. Here are two great examples of monochromatic from Blade Runner 2049 with Harrison Ford in that whole scene and in Asteroid City. It's just one hue. All you're doing is changing up the luminance and the saturation to get that contrast in that, you know, overall pop of an image. And lastly is analogous. This is a very interesting color scheme. Um, I actually had to study this a little bit more just to make sure I understood it well. You're basically taking three hues that are adjacent to each other and that is your color palette. So for example, in La La Land, this is a really cool scene. I think it demonstrates it well. You have a yellow, yellowish green and orangish yellow and you're kind of, you're, you're in that color palette. All right, so now let's really get into it. I wanna show you guys how to light with RGB lights. Uh, the first one that I wanna go with is a more narrative feel. And I actually got some inspiration from a music video called Slow Dancing in the Dark by Joji. I didn't know who this person was until I saw a screenshot on Shot Deck, but here's my inspiration. This shot I thought was freaking gorgeous. So me and a couple buddies went downtown Salt Lake. We found a bus stop that had a nice glass siding, plexiglass. And so the first thing that I did after finding my frame, figuring out what I wanted to do, is I actually adjusted my color temperature in my camera from 5600 up to 7200. And I did that because I didn't have control over the street lights. And so I wanted those to be super, super orange. And so I pushed that color temperature up and got those to where I want it to be. Next, I took my Nanlite Pavo Tube 30X. I love this thing, first off, one of my favorite lights. And I put that up on a C stand. I wanted to mimic overhead fluorescent lighting, but I stick that up and then set it to a fluorescent E green look. And I actually, I put it onto green on, I, so I took the hue and I took it to green and then I actually brought the saturation down so that it wasn't this like green, but it had like a normal white look ish with that punch of green in it. And then last, I wanted a couple more lights. There was lots of street lights going on in this scene, but I wanted one more light just way in the deep background to fill in one of the gaps. And I actually should have done two, but whatever. So I used my Zion M20C. This light is freaking awesome. And I put it on a C stand and sticked that up. And I had it on a very orange hue, um, full intensity. It was 100% full saturation. And I sticked that up and yeah, just a nice little pop of light way in the deep background. Speaking of these lights, I just wanna go over real quick. Zion did send me these lights for free. They didn't pay me or anything. I don't have to say anything good about them. They gave them and just said, you know, do with them as you please. If you like them, great. If not, great. But these are the Zion Fiber Array M20C RGB lights. It's a 20 watt light that is full RGB and it actually has this really nice housing and comes with some diffusion and barn doors. So overall, 
I do like the lights. The reason why I like them is because I don't believe that there's such a thing as a perfect light or, you know, bad lights or good lights. Every light has, it's a, it's a tool. It's used for different things. All right, so for the final mwah, chef's kiss in this scene, we got some herbal cigarettes for my talent, Dave Martinez, to smoke on, and that added the final touch. The only thing that I wish I would have added more was a glycerin water mixture to be able to have some, like, drops of water on the bus stop. But besides that, this looks freaking awesome. All right, so now let's basically keep the same setup and I wanna do a complementary color scheme now. So with everything in the same place, I'm gonna take my Pavo tube and I'm gonna push it blue. Once I found my right hue, I then dialed the saturation down again so that it wasn't just this punchy, punchy blue look. I have to say this look has a very Joker feel to it, I would say. And the nice thing about RGB lights is because there's so much color separation, I'm actually in post-production in DaVinci Resolve. I'm able to take that blue and adjust it however I want. If I need it a little more teal, if I need it a little more purpley sort of blue. Um, but, but yeah, it's really nice whenever you have like super color separation to mess with those colors. But now I wanna use some commercial examples because commercial is where you can just get really, really crazy and nobody gives an F. So let's get into that. For this commercial, I found some pit vipers on Amazon and uh, no, I do not wear pit vipers. I'm not that guy, but found some pit vipers to do a sunglasses commercial. So to start off, I wanted to do a monochromatic look. I love monochromatic. I, I don't know what it is, I just feel like I don't know, I just love that it's one hue and then you're just playing with the saturation and the luminance. So to start off, I am gonna take my M20C, place it directly behind my talent with the pit vipers on and I dialed it down pretty low because I wanted to get a silhouette look. And then I took this nifty little gadget that I rented from my local rental house. It's called a Smoke Genie. It looks literally like a vape. Um, probably much bigger than a vape, I don't vape, but it's a little smoke machine. So I stood right behind my talent and I puffed that light and it illuminated that smoke coming out and just gave a nice silhouette to my talent. And then I played with another monochromatic look. These glasses, you know, they're super reflective, so I wanted to get a nice reflection on the glasses. So I set up my Pavo tube and used the pixel effect, and I took, uh, it's called process. So the base layer was a red, but really desaturated, so like almost white, but it was the base layer was like a red. And then the pixel going by was a full saturation red. And this looked pretty dope, I gotta say. The only thing, I was having a struggle getting the exact reflection in the glasses, that like a full reflection, but I really did like this look. And then his skin just, mm just looks so good. But the next day I decided to give it another go. And so I took one of my five in one reflectors and pulled out the diffusion, set that up, and then took my M20C and blasted that through to create a nice big source. And that got the look that I was going for in the glasses. However, I do like how more direct and punchy it was with my talent rather than the light really wrapping around my face. So. I would have to play with that more, maybe do some negative on both sides or something, I don't know. But yeah, so here's like a monochromatic look. Here's like two ways of doing it. Um, yeah, I really like it. So the thing with commercials and like music videos is the color doesn't always have to be this like color scheme. It can be fun to just have colors just going. So I took the pit vipers and I put them on some glass to get that nice reflection. And then I took my Pavo tube and just kind of had some colors going around, just playing with it. And then I took the Smoke Genie, and here's a really cool feature of this. Because it's a glycerin-based fog, it sits like low-lying fog, and you put this little attachment on it, and it's so cool. It like, it literally looks like this thick, watery substance. It's freaking insane. So yeah, you can play with you know all these different things and get the look that you want. All right, so for the last look of this video, I wanna show you guys some complimentary colors, just full saturation, full, you know, just the whole thing. So I took the two M20Cs, placed them behind me, and put them kind of as more like backlights, and then set them to complementary colors. And I actually really like to use, whenever I'm using RGB lights, I like to have one light that's kind of a, a 5600 normal white looking light, just to have almost like a reference, be able to have something that is, is white and then have 
RGB lights hitting the back of you or just whatever, you know, hitting the scene. All right, guys, well, that is it for today. So just remember, you can use RGB lights to exaggerate things. It doesn't have to be this full pop of color in certain things. It can just be to exaggerate looks. And then you can also use it to have really, really punchy RGB looks. As always, there's never a right or wrong way to do this stuff. It is art. And so it's up to your discretion. Some people will say, oh, that's not the way to do it. Well, sorry, brother. There's no one way to do things. Also, the links for everything will be in the description down below, including the M20Cs. There's also a discount code that you can use both through their actual store or through Amazon. And as always, if you guys have any questions about anything, please let me know. Go follow me on Instagram and DM me. I am always on there and happy to help in any way that I can. And remember, it's just about getting a little bit better every day.